Matthew chapter 15. That'll be pretty easy to find after you find Matthew chapter 14. But um, we're going to read a few verses of Scripture in these, try to bring the message God's put on our heart, and uh, just pray. I want you to know everything that God did in, in the meeting in Illinois, if you prayed for us, you had a part in it. And just being a part of this church, you had a part in it. I thank God that I work with a group of men that will allow me to go. Amen. I don't go a lot, but I've been doing that meeting now for 20 years. And um, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that when I went out there, I'm not just excited about the meeting, but I'm excited to be sitting in the woods where you might see a giant as far as a white-tailed deer. Amen. Amen. And if you're not a deer hunter, you don't understand that. Amen. And I'll pray for you. Amen. 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 But uh, it, it, it's, it's a blessing. Amen. It, it really is a blessing. And uh, to go and, and to know that folk at home are praying for us. And to come in the door this morning, if I've heard it once, I've heard it 50 times. Pastor, we missed you. And I want you to know I missed you all too. I mean that. I mean that. Thank you for being here this morning. Matthew chapter number 14, we'll begin reading in verse 15. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place. And the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals or something to eat. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give you them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. You learn in another one of the texts that it was a lad that had the five loaves and the two fishes. I believe that's in the book of John. And he said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fishes. Look at this. I hope you'll underline this in your Bible. God has underlined it in my heart. Looking up to heaven, he blessed. Jesus was a very, very busy man, but he had time to be thankful. He had time that the people might understand you're seeing me doing something, but it's really not me. It's my Father. You're seeing me break the bread and break the fishes and feeding thousands of people. But Jesus understood something you and I need to understand. We can do nothing without him. We have nothing without him. And the Bible said, and he said, bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed and he break. And he gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up the fragments that remained 12 baskets full and that they had eaten there about 5,000 men besides the women and the children. You can be seated. We'll look at chapter 15 in a moment. Father, thank you tonight or this morning, Lord, for the privilege to be here at Bible Way with our people. Thank you for the wonderful Sunday school hour, Lord. Lord, I can only imagine, Lord, when I was Brother Jake's age, being that far away from home, I pray, Lord, that he would understand, Lord, that he was not just loved this morning, but God, he's left a mark in our church and he'll be loved in the future. Yeah. Yeah. What a blessing to meet him. Lord, I pray for his dad. I pray for his family. I pray for the woman, Lord, that might be his wife. God, you know. And I just ask you, Father, to, to work. Work it all out, our Father, in accordance with your will. Now help us, Lord, this morning, please, as we look in the scripture to glean that we might, Lord, leave here with a better understanding of who Jesus is. And, Lord, that it might speak to our hearts as well. In thy name we pray. Amen. 
Take your Bibles now, turn to the book of Matthew chapter 15, please. And uh, we'll begin reading in verse 32. And Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude. Can I tell you this? He still has compassion on the multitude. One of the things that we learned, Brother Jim, when we were out there is that the young people in that area, many of them are astray. It's, it's an area that's infested with drugs and then just infested with bad stuff. And most of the young people are not in church. And, uh, and I guess that's probably true in Kingsport, most of the young people. Thank God the devil ain't got them all, amen, but thank God there's a remnant. But Jesus had compassion on the multitude. In the family, the daddy was saved, uh, um, uh, Alex, and uh, oh boy, I can't remember the lady's name now. It slipped me. It's, uh, I can't remember. God help me. I've got them written down in my Bible, but I remember the teenage girl, Ariana. I remember Brother Larry, the tears in her eyes. I remember the change in her face. If a man had to drive 100,000 miles to see one life changed, it'd be worth it all. Amen. Jesus sees the multitude. He sees them. He has compassion on them. The Bible said, because they continue with me now three days and they have nothing to eat, and I will send them away fasting. And he said, I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. And his disciples say unto him, whence uh, should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? I kind of feel small this morning in that I have read these texts many times. But after what we just read in, verse, in, in, in chapter number 14 with the 5,000, five loaves and two fishes, and you come over here and the Bible talks about uh, how many loaves have you? They said seven and a few little fishes. After you've just experienced what's went on in chapter 14, yeah. how in the world could you ask this question in chapter 15? How in the world could you ask Jesus, after just seeing what he did with 5,000, what are you going to do with 4,000? But I want to say this to you. We're a whole lot more like them disciples than we want to admit. He's come through on our behalf, Brother Anthony, time and time and time and time again. And we're up against the wall again and like, what are we going to do? The Bible said here, Jesus said unto them, how many loaves have ye? And they said, seven and a few little fishes. I don't know what the little fishes were. I don't know if they were bluegills or sardines or <laughs> we were talking about hunting, Brother Michael. Now you might not hunt, Brother Michael, but Michael number two back there, he does. And me and this fella in Wise, me and him and his daddy went all the time together. And uh, his daddy never even saw a deer. Me and, me and my buddy, we'd usually kill a deer. His daddy, never, he couldn't even see a deer. I didn't see nothing. What'd y'all see? Found out where he was sitting one day and he had the leaves all kicked out around the tree. And there was three sardine cans laying there. Y'all know what sardines smell like? As far as I'm concerned, you'd have to be desperate to put one of them things in your mouth. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I don't know what the little fishes were, but there was a few of them. And he commanded the multitude to sit on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fishes, underlined these words, and gave thanks. Y'all know Jesus didn't have to do that, right? He could have just started breaking and started blessing and started feeding. But he took the time. 
to give thanks. The Bible said he gave thanks and he broke them and he gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled and they took up the broken meat that was left, seven baskets full. They that did eat were 4,000 men besides the women and children. And he sent away the multitude and took ship and came into the coast of Magdala. What I want to preach about this morning is these three times that God has spoke to my heart in the Gospels. Now, not all three of them will be this morning. This morning, we're talking about the, the bread with the 5,000 and with the 4,000 and the fishes. And by the way, I'm going to tell you this, the feeding of the 5,000 is recorded in all four Gospels. The feeding of the 4,000 is only recorded here in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, and in Mark, chapter number 8. That doesn't mean that one's more important than the other. I just wanted to give you that. But here, there are six accounts, six accounts of where Jesus broke the bread and the fishes and fed 5,000 in four of those accounts and 4,000 in another account. But you cannot find one account in Matthew, Mark, or Luke, or John that Jesus did not stop and look towards heaven and give thanks. Blessed. I don't know about you. He's the son of God. And if he felt it needful to stop, I wonder this week how many people in America are going to sit down to a, a wonderful meal. There was supposed to be, I heard, you hear a lot of things that aren't true, but there was supposed to be a turkey shortage. When my, my son called me and he said, Dad, we've got turkeys over here for 99 cents a pound that we found. He said, he said my wife got two of them, said maybe mom could use one of them. I said, son, I'm sure she could. I know my wife. She knows what to do with a turkey. It'll be good. I don't know if there's a shortage or not. But I know this. If our hearts was right, on Thanksgiving Day, if we couldn't have a turkey, if we had a chicken leg, or if we had a peanut butter cracker, we could still turn our hearts towards heaven and say that's more than we deserve. Being able to look around the table and see my babies and my grandbabies and understand that God's given us a measure of health. God's given us a measure of love one for another. Being able to fellowship with God's people. Beloved, we take so much for granted. And yet God has given us a special opportunity to stop. There's three things I want you to notice in the message, and I'll be finished today. I'm about to get started. It won't take long. First, I want you to notice the multitude. There was a multitude that was willing to follow Jesus. If you'll read in your Bible, Jesus had been healing those that were diseased. And beloved, it's no wonder that this multitude was willing to follow him three days with nothing to eat now. They were just so excited to see what's next. Boy, wouldn't it be good if we could come to church with that kind of anticipation saying, God, what's next? What are you going to do now? But sometimes we come to church with absolutely no expectation whatsoever. We don't expect God to do anything. We've not prayed. We've not studied We've not witnessed, we've not shared, but Jesus has a multitude. By the way, Brother Sam, this is one of the things that's causing him trouble. You see, as long as your church is just average, you won't have much trouble in a town. But if a multitude starts following you, then all of a sudden, beloved, you can look out. Amen. He must be a liberal. Amen. They, they feared because they were losing their grip. The multitudes were not following the Sadducees and the Pharisees, but the multitudes were following the Savior of the world. 
waiting to see what he would do next. Anticipating what he would do next. Can I say this to you this morning? They were willing to follow. I believe with all of my heart that they had traveled with him for the three days and didn't even realize. Have you ever lived in such a fellowship with God that you didn't even realize the time that was going by? I remember when God first saved me, Brother Wayne, it was two weeks before I even realized my feet were on the ground. I'd never experienced anything so wonderful in all my life. My sins forgiven, a joy that was poured into my life, unspeakable and full of glory. I'm telling you, beloved, a peace that passes all understanding, knowing that my sin had been forgiven. And time just didn't seem like time anymore. I think the three days passed by swiftly. I believe there was lots of conversation. You say, Pastor, you don't have any Bible for that. But you know, somebody's son got healed, Brother Michael. They're talking about it in that circle. Somebody's mama got healed. They're talking about it in that circle. Somebody's brother, say amen. Somebody's mamma, somebody's papa. I'm just telling you, beloved, thousands of people are thronging after him and following him. And Jesus, he looked at the multitude and there's two things that he did. Number one, he had compassion on them. There was a multitude that was willing to follow but had Jesus not had compassion on them, that, that multitude, they would, there would have been a multitude that would have fainted. Jesus understood. Listen to me, you can be super spiritual if you want to, but these bodies need food. These bodies need water, amen? Yes, there's a, it's good to take a time to fast and a time to pray. But Jesus said, we've been traveling some distance and they've been following and now they're hungry, amen? And the, listen to me, listen to me. Get a hold of this. The disciples wanted to send them away empty into the town to buy something to eat. And Jesus later in the text, we just read it, he sends them away, but he doesn't send them away empty. He sends them away plump full. You say, Pastor, what are you trying to say? You might have come in empty, but if you go away the Savior the way the Savior wants you to go away, you won't go away the same way you came in. You won't go away empty. Amen. You'll go away full. Yeah. And by the way, he's got enough to fill every one of us and have leftovers. Amen. <laughs> leftovers. The 4,000. Seven loaves. Right? Seven baskets. The 5,000. Five loaves and two small fishes. Twelve baskets. I'm telling you, beloved, Jesus had more left over after everybody was full than they had to start with. Amen. And I'll tell you this, if you've never figured out what a blessing it is to tithe, what a blessing it is to give to missions, what a blessing it is to give of alms. In other words, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing, just trying to help somebody along the way. If you've never figured that out, then you don't know what I'm talking about. Say amen. I'm telling you, beloved, he can take what you've got. It might not be much, but he can break it and he can bless it and he can multiply it for his honor and for his glory. We see a multitude that's willing to follow, but Jesus had compassion on them. They would be fainting without his compassion. And I want you to get a hold of this. Don't miss this. Jesus didn't just have compassion on the multitude. Jesus commanded the multitude. You say, Pastor, why is that important? Let me tell you something. Get a hold of this now. The Bible said he made them to sit down in companies. And you may not believe what I'm about to say, but our God is a God that wants things done decently and in order. He made them to sit down in companies. Now, I think when you just read through this, you might think, well, it's like a 30-minute wait at the restaurant after church. I don't see it like that. Listen to me carefully. 
Jesus takes the bread and he takes the fishes and he blesses them. He looks towards heaven, he gives thanks. Some, the, some of the text says he gives thanks. Others says he blesses them. But listen, he gives to the disciples. How many of them are there? How many? That's exactly right, 12. Brother Gary, this is taking some time. You can say whatever you want to, brother. This didn't happen just like that, amen. This is taking some time. And he's breaking and he's blessing. And he's giving to the disciples. And then the disciples go out and give it to the multitude. By the way, there's a picture there in church. Church will never be what church is supposed to be until the people that are taken in go out and give out what they're taking in. Let me say that again. Church will never be what it's supposed to be until the people that come into church and take in go out and give out what they've been taken in. Over in Israel, there's a place called the Dead Sea. And the reason it's dead is because it has an inlet. The Jordan River runs into it, but there's no outlet. And God, a lot of God's people, listen, they're saved, but to act dead because they have an inlet they sit with a bird, like a bird in the nest with the mouth wide open. Feed me, feed me, feed me. Sunday school teacher, feed me. Pastor, feed me. But they never give out anything that they've been fed. The multitude. We had a lady last week said something like this. And the only way I could have responded was in a form of rebuke. And I just didn't, I didn't feel led. to. But she said, I, I never say anything to anybody because I'm afraid I'll offend them. I mean, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you'll be led of the Holy Ghost, if it's offensive, it needs to be. Amen. Jesus didn't tell everybody what they wanted to hear. He told them what they needed to hear. I'm going to tell you this. It's going to be a sad day at the great white throne judgment if somebody looks across at me and says, you knew the way and why didn't you tell me? You knew. We see the multitude. They're willing to follow. They would be feigning. But we see a multitude, beloved, that's going to increase in their faith. I, I, just, I just see them sitting around in companies and I hear conversation like this. Can you believe this? He started with five loaves and two small fishes. I'm getting full, ain't you? He started with seven loaves and a few small fishes. I'm getting full, ain't you? Now listen, I believe when the word of God said they were filled, I believe they were filled. I, I, I believe they couldn't have stuck another piece of fish in their mouth, amen? I believe as old boy says, as full, plumb up to here, amen? They were full. And the word of God is telling us right in the middle of all of this, Right in the middle, there's a multitude, but then there's a miracle. You say, Pastor, why did the miracle happen? I'll, I'll tell you this. Listen to me carefully. How many would like to see some more miracles in our churches? The main miracle I'm talking about, beloved, listen. Yes, God can touch people, and God can heal people, and that's God's business, amen? But I'm talking about the main miracle is somebody saying yes to the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Somebody getting their sins rolled off of them, amen? getting their name in the Lamb's book of life. If we want to see more miracles, here's what we need. Why did we see the miracle? Number one, because there was a lad that surrendered. I don't know what kind of bag that maybe that boy's lunch was in. I doubt if it was a paper bag. I knew if they knew, I don't even know if they knew what a paper bag was. It may have been some kind of a basket. But I do not see where the disciples had to wrestle that boy and wrestle that lunch away from him. You know what I believe? I don't believe there's anybody closer to the Lord than a child. I don't believe that child had any, any problem at all understanding. We've done seen this man do this and do this and do this. Give him my lunch and let's see what he does now. He surrendered. He surrendered. By the way, let me say this. He didn't, God's not calling on you and I to surrender what we don't have. He's calling on you and I to surrender what we do have. We're not going to be held accountable 
for that that we don't have. It's a miracle because there's a lad that surrendered. It's a miracle because it's the Lord that sustains. It's the Lord, beloved, listen, that broke it, that blessed it, that gave thanks for it, and it just began to multiply. Nobody else could do that but Jesus. And I want to give you this. It's a miracle because it's the Lord that satisfies. I want to ask you a question. How many has ever been to a restaurant and you left unsatisfied? Would you raise your hand? How many's left disappointed? When you're married to a cook like I'm married, amen, it happens a lot. I'm just being honest with you. And my wife so willingly many times, she'll say, why don't we just stop at the grocery store? And sometimes I rebel and I say, no, honey, you need to rest today. And sometimes I say, you're right. Let's just stop at the, I'm, I'm, I don't care if it ain't nothing but a hamburger. She does it better, amen. amen. But what I want to give you in this lesson this morning where Jesus breaks and Jesus blesses and Jesus looks to heaven and gives thanks, not one. I promise you, there's 4,000, that's the men. There's 5,000, that's the men. That's besides the women. That's besides the children. So if there's one man and one child, that's 15,000 with the feeding of the 5,000. Personally, I believe there was more than that. Back then, they believed in big families. Say amen. amen. But watch this. Not one not one boy, not one girl, not one teenager, not one mom, not one dad, not one mamma, not one papa, not one left unsatisfied. They were all satisfied. Satisfied. The disciples said, send them away. You go over there um, and I, I don't know what it does, does uh, is it Philip that says 200 penny worth of bread? I don't know if I'm getting the number right. I'm going on memory, and that's dangerous. Uh, would not suffice. No, but just one little piece in the hand of the master can satisfy the multitude. No wonder Jesus felt it needful right in the middle of the miracle to look up towards heaven. He wanted to be sure that God got the glory for everything that was happening. I want to say something to you. The night I left the altar, excuse me, left my pew and came to the altar. I actually didn't come to the altar. I actually just came down and stood in front of the communion table and I motioned for my pastor to come down. Brother, I was one of those six and a half years church member, faithful church member, I wasn't drinking on Friday night and going to church. I was trying my best to be a good daddy and be a good husband. I remember holding my first baby in my arms and thinking, my God, I can't keep living like this. I remember that well. I remember my brother inviting me to church. and I remember that journey. I remember him asking me if I'd been saved. I remember telling him yes because I thought saved was believing those facts. Jesus died. He was buried. He rose again the third day. I believed all that all my life. My pastor said, come down here, brother. He came down and he said, what is it, Rick? I said, uh, Pastor, I, I'm lost. I need to be saved. He said, Rick, are you sure you, the devil don't have you tripped up and deceived? I said, Pastor, I've been deceived for 27 years. I don't know if you all know what sewer is or if you've ever smelled it, but I felt like I was standing in sewer up to there I, I, I heard brother Sammy talking about those rags last week where the leper amen would clean those sores that's what our righteousness is it's as filthy rags in the sight of God I said pastor I'm lost I need to be saved he said are you sure the devil don't have you tripped up and deceived I said brother I've been deceived for 27 years that's why I have to stand here in this mess tonight when I tell a story like this or you find out somebody that was a, a deacon got saved or somebody that was a preacher got saved or somebody that was a church member. So, listen, if you're saved, that don't bother you one bit. 
But I tell you, if you're not, it ought to bother you. Because, beloved, listen, I've never heard it put like that before, riding a church pew to hell. I remember, uh, y'all, y'all got to experience, uh, how many's never heard a North Carolina preacher before la- last week? Anybody? Never heard a North Carolina preacher? You never? So you got that experience last week with that. Ah! Ah! That's the way Brother Mays Jackson preached. Amen. How many ever heard Brother Mays Jackson preach? That's the way. How many remembers Brother Eddie Crusenberry that come here and visited with us? He passed. His daddy preached the announcements like that. <laughs> Uh, Brother Brother Ralph, he preached the announcements. He'd get the bulletin out bulletin out, and preach. We're going to have dinner uh, at the church. Uh, praise God. Uh, join us. Uh. <laughs> My pastor was from North Carolina. I said to him, would you get your Bible? We nailed in the altar, and I'll never forget what he said. He said, Rick, I'm glad you come, son. By this time, my pastor was weeping. He said, there ain't nothing worth dying going to hell over. Can I tell you this morning, your pride ain't worth dying going to hell over. Can I tell you whatever sin you're in love with, it ain't worth dying going to hell over. And that night, God saved me. You say, Pastor, why'd you tell that whole story? Because I want you to know something. I got up. The devil said they'll laugh at you. I got to a place where I didn't care if they did laugh. The devil said they'll throw you out of the church. I got to a place where I didn't care if they did throw me out of the church. I wanted to be forgiven so bad. I was so tired of standing in that mess. I was so tired of the filth. I was so tired of the guilt. I was so tired of the shame. It didn't matter to me what they did. Let me tell you this. Here's my whole point. (laughs) I got up. People rejoiced. It wasn't hardly a dry eye anywhere, people. I used to play the piano before I got saved. One fellow said I was a Sunday school teacher before I, I thought I was the only religious man in the world that didn't know Jesus. And I found out that old devil's a liar. Here's the whole point of why I told that. I left that church that night <laughs> satisfied. <laughs> and I've been satisfied ever since. I ain't never had to look for another well. I ain't never had to look for another piece of bread. I ain't never had to look for another Savior. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ satisfied that longing in my soul that night. And I've been satisfied ever since. We see the multitude. We see the miracle. But I want you to just take a look with me briefly at the master. The master, just a couple of things here. There's two things really that I want you to see that that the main thrust of the message right here, he exhibits humility. Jesus, we're living, Brother John, we're living in a church age where many of the preachers, they want to be the one that everybody sees. They want to be the one in the limelight. They want to be the one that Everybody pays attention to. And I see Jesus with the 5,000. I see Jesus with the 4,000. And when he's looking up to heaven, now when it says he gave thanks, I don't believe he said, Lord, come through the crack, bless this snack, and go right back. I, I believe he'd done a little bit of praying there. I believe he might have said something like this, Lord, I thank you that there's a multitude that's interested in what's going on here. Lord, I thank you for that little boy. Lord, I'm glad we didn't have to wrestle that lunch away from that little boy. I'm glad he just so willingly gave of what he had. Lord, I'm glad, I'll just go ahead and combine these last two points under the master. Lord, I'm glad I've got these disciples here with me, Brother Gary, to help me, that I'm not here alone. I'm not in this all by myself. And, And Lord, I'm so glad that, Lord, you've worked this out today. Everybody's hungry. And Lord, you're gonna show them, Lord, that there's only one way that everybody can be satisfied. And that's through Jesus. That's through a heavenly father. I don't know what all he prayed. I won't be dogmatic about it. 
I know when Elijah prayed, I think it was just 39 words. It's not the length of the prayer. It's the heart of the prayer. When Peter was sinking, three words. What did he say? Lord, save me. (laughs) Ain't that right? It's not the length of the prayer. What about the thief on the cross? Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Lots of times we think it's the length of the prayer. But if our heart ain't in it, it ain't going nowhere anyway. Sometimes it's not the length of the prayer. It's the humility. It's the understanding. We can't do anything to help ourselves. But we can look to him. I'll lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. If he made this thing, then whatever we need, he can supply it. Amen. The thrust of my message this morning, the Lord dealt with my heart about We're going to look at two others tonight and Tuesday night, God willing, is where Jesus, right in the middle of a miracle, felt it needful to turn his eyes towards heaven. He looked up and he gave thanks. I hope this week we'll take our some time to turn our eyes toward heaven. I also hope this week that we'll take some time see Jesus didn't only turn his eyes towards heaven the Bible said brother Wayne, when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion upon them. I'm all for a vertical vision. Where there's no vision, the Bible said the people perish. But we also need a horizontal vision. We need to be able to say, Michael, I thank God for you, brother. I know it might have seemed like an accident. That's the best accident I've ever experienced in a long time. Amen. He's looking up another church on his phone, and his phone let him hear. He told his wife, we're hearing the word of God here. We'll just stay. (laughs) Some would say it's an accident. I'd say it's providence. Brother Michael, would I be right to say that you and I are closer right now than before you got sick. I've prayed for you more. We don't need, Sister Carol, just to look up. We do need to look up, but we need to look around. There's a multitude. Multitudes. I can't remember one of the prophets Set in the valley of decision. Multitudes that need help. Let's pray. Come on, Brother Ralph, Sister Laura. Father, thank you this morning now for the privilege to break the bread of life. Lord, I'm glad that you recruited some help You didn't want it to be, Lord, all about you. But, Lord, you wanted the folks to know that you had a Father in heaven. You wanted the folks to know, Lord, you couldn't do it by yourself. God, I pray the folks at Bible Way would understand. Lord, no one can do it by themselves. We need each other. God, there's people sitting in our midst today that are unsatisfied. Lord, I don't know what it would take 
God, I pray some way, somehow, the Spirit of God would break through and show them, Lord, what they're missing. Just because, Lord, they're unwilling. God, I pray that you would help them. Lord, for us that know what it is to be fed by the Master's hand, to have a salvation that's true, that's satisfying, help us not to be guilty of keeping that to ourselves. God, there's a multitude that need Jesus. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed this morning, no one looking around, folk in the altar praying.